one of the most common questions I get is, what handgun should I buy? What caliber should I buy? What load should I carry? And what holster should I carry my gun in? Today I've brought out three examples of handguns that I've been carrying, let's say, for the last year or so, within the last year. And these are handguns that I've carried quite a bit. I want to show you how I have them set up, and I'll explain to you why I've chosen them, and then I'll get into answering the questions, hopefully, that I just broke down for you as we opened up the video. So in the future, when I get asked that question, I'm going to refer people back to this video to avoid having to type out a lengthy response in the comment section, either on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram. So let's get started and talk about some of those questions that I started the video out with. So let's address the 800 pound gorilla in the room. What's the best handgun for concealed carry? I can't tell you that. Nobody can tell you that. Anybody that would tell you with a straight face that this is the gun that you need to go buy right now is either joking or they really don't know what they're talking about. And I say that because there are so many different handguns out there that are good qualified candidates for concealed carry. And each and every one of us has different needs, has different sized hands, different ergonomic requirements, things that nobody can tell you if that's exactly what you need. Any more than I can tell you what car you should drive or what underwear you should wear. Those are personal decisions that only you can uh, arrive at a conclusion for. Now, what people like myself can do is show you different firearms that are out there, talk about our experiences with them, and kind of steer you into a local gun shop where you can lay hands on different types of firearms and see what works for you. Do you want a double stack magazine? Are you fine with a single stack? Do you want 15 rounds or 17 rounds? Are you fine with 10 rounds? Do you you know, want a compact, you want a full size, you do you intend to carry it inside the waistband appendix or inside the waistband at the four o'clock, outside the waistband at three o'clock. All those things must be taken into consideration and then what works best for you ergonomically. And again, that's something only you can answer for yourself. So what I can do is show you some of the handguns that I personally carry, guns I've carried quite a bit and I've brought out three examples today. My primary carry used to be a Glock 19. The Glock 19 is kind of the gold standard for many people and with good reason. It's a very reliable, affordable handgun that's earned a good reputation. I used to carry one, but I got rid of it. I didn't get rid of it, I still own it, but I swapped it out for a CZP01. You're gonna see that this thing's covered in lint because it gets carried so much, but this is my primary carry. And I say primary carry because this is my default go-to gun. It's a double stack, holds 14 rounds in a flush fitting magazine, 15 rounds if I put one in the pipe. And I'm gonna talk about some of the things that I do, some of the changes I often make to a carry gun. And then I'll talk about some of the changes I don't typically make, but I kind of break the rules with this one. We'll get into that later in the video. But I also have a very compact Enforce light on here. And this is the APLC. I've chosen it because it's nice and small. It doesn't stick out past the muzzle. And with a good holster, you'll find all the holsters I have out here. All my carry holsters are a &R design. And I carry appendix. And so this is a comfortable carry option for me at, at doing the appendix carry at the, uh, I guess you'd call it the 12 o'clock position kind of offset, not exactly 12 o'clock. But this works for me. The light is unobtrusive. It's not poking me in the nether regions. It doesn't stick out past the barrel. It's relatively short barrel length. It's something that I find very comfortable and easy to carry. Don't let me forget to talk about the features <laughs> that some of the things I oftentimes change in a carry gun. Another handgun that I first mocked, but once I started shooting it, I fell madly in love with that I find myself carrying is the Glock 43X. Now, why would I carry this over the uh, CZP01. Well, it's thinner. It's a little bit more concealable because of its, its thin size. And I will carry an appendix. And once again, I will carry it in an ANR design holster. Now you'll notice this is just generally a smaller package. Not much smaller, but smaller. And once again, it's very unobtrusive. In this case, I have a TLR6 light. There's some common themes that you would have seen on the PO1 that you're seeing now on this Glock 43X. You'll also notice that there's some commonality between the two guns that I've already shown you with regards to the sights. Again, don't let me forget to talk about that. And then another handgun that I've fallen for, Lord knows I've given this gun enough chances, and that's the SIG P365XL. The original I won't carry. I've been carrying this handgun, shooting it quite a bit. Again, it's covered in lint, 
but I've also noticed that it's got rust on it and none of my other carry guns do. You can see the, the lint on that front sight. I, um, I'll try to get a picture of that, but yeah, there's definitely rust on it. I just found that out. I was carrying it today. I carried it all day today. I carry appendix and rust is one of those things you have to worry about. And um, yeah, that shouldn't be happening. The finish should protect the gun from that. So that's kind of a ding on the SIGS finish because the other guns out here, my CZ's not rusting uh, and my Glock's not rusting. So, and I've carried them. I definitely carried the CZ more, the 43X, probably about the same amount of time in holster as this gun. But once again, you'll see that I have a TLR6 light on here, but here's something else that I've done. And these are Talon rubberized grips that I will oftentimes use on guns, polymer frame guns that don't have adjustable grip panels. All right, once again, AR design holster and carries very nicely. Now it's just a little bit smaller than the PO1. And again, it's really a competitor for the Glock 43X as to which one I would carry. Uh, ideally, I would just pick one over the other, but I like them both. But uh, yeah, there's some things I don't like about the, the P365 XL, which we'll get into here momentarily. So next, let's talk about some of the features that I oftentimes, or I, I should say components, I'll swap out or change about a stock handgun or on a stock handgun for my own personal carry. See, you reminded me, I didn't forget to talk about it. As a general rule, I won't tinker with the internal components of a handgun when I carried a Glock 19. All I changed were the sights, and sometimes I'd carry it with a light. Most often back then I did not carry it with a light. But the only thing I changed on it was really the sights and I would put talon grips on, and uh, I did actually have Robar refinish my Glock 19 in its final iteration before transitioning to the PO1. And I did that because the Robar finish, uh, coupled with the Tenifer that was already on the gun, would make for darn near an impregnable uh, finish on the handgun, which is something that you have to worry about, especially when you carry inside the waistband like I do, because you're going to get potentially rust like we see on the SIG P365XL. So on this handgun, I've swapped out the factory grips. I found that the rubberized grips were too grippy. They would they'd grip the clothing and they would grip against my skin. It made it uncomfortable. So I swapped them out for some G10 grips. Doesn't really change the ergonomics of the gun, but it definitely improved how they interface with me and how I carry. So carrying appendix, it's rubbing against my skin, irritating my skin because of the grippy nature of the factory grips. And then the shirt again would grip to the grips and it would cause my shirt to kind of ride up and stay up, which is not something you want to do uh, or have happen with a concealed firearm. So the other thing I did to this handgun is something I generally don't do and that's swap out trigger components. And it's not because of lawsuits or anything like that. The reason I generally don't swap out trigger components is because guns like the Glock, out of the box, they're thoroughly tested, all OEM parts, it's gonna work. Almost every single time I've seen a Glock or some other uh, firearm handgun malfunction on the firing range, it's been a gun that somebody's tinkered with that has non-OEM parts in it, that or user error. They don't fully cycle, cycle the slide or something else. But generally when I see a failure, it's usually on a gun that has non-OEM parts in it. Not always, but often enough that I simply don't often change my OEM parts. That's not the case with my P01. I have a Cajun Gunworks trigger in it. The reason I have a Cajun Gunworks trigger in it is because for years and years I've used Cajun triggers in CZ handguns. I've come to trust them and I feel that they're as reliable as a factory trigger. But the reason I went with it, let's go ahead and make sure that the gun is clear. The reason I went with it is in a carry condition with the hammer right here from the decocker, it leaves it on half cock. If you take a look at the double action trigger pull, right there, the trigger hits the sear or starts to engage, I should say. And then look how short the trigger pull is before it fires. Very, very short trigger pull. Again, look how short that trigger pull is. That, and it's only a little over six pounds, which is the trigger pull weight of an average Glock out of the box. For double action, that is my safety, that double action trigger pull. I choose to carry my CZs. Some of them, you can alter the configuration. I like the configuration that's decocker only. I don't like manual safeties, especially on double action, single action handguns. I almost always change out the sights and I prefer 
TFX Pros, which is what I have on here now. Let's see if you guys can get a look at that. The TFX Pros have little vials of tritium inside of them, but they also have fiber optic cutouts here and fiber optics inserted in, in them. And so what that does is gives, gives you a very distinctive sight picture that glows in daylight and also glows the exact same way in low light. That, and they have a shelf on top so that you can actually run the action of the gun by snagging on clothing. It has a nice, not just a right angle shelf, but a slightly forward leaning shelf. I found that the sights are durable. I've used them on many different guns and I love the sight picture. So that's one of the things I'll always do. And as of late, I'll put a light on a gun. When I'm looking for lights, I'm looking for something that's small and compact. With this gun in the holster, there's no chance that I'm gonna hit the switch and knock the light on and burn the, bulb out, or burn the battery out. And that's why I like the APLC. Some people hate them. Again, getting into a discussion about lights is like getting into a discussion about cars. Uh, people have their battle lines drawn. Some people like N4, so other people hate them and whatever. I don't get into all that. All I know is I use what works for me and this light has worked for me quite well. And with my a &R design holster, it covers those switches up. Again, I don't have to worry about the, the light being turned on and uh, the holster also protects the light from any type of damage. Should I drop it while holstered or whatever, or get into a tussle. So that's generally the things I will change. The grips, and on polymer frame guns, I'll put talon grips on sometimes. I'll change the grips. I'll put different sights on it and a light. And I don't very often change out the trigger components, but those are about the only upgrades or changes I'll make to a handgun. Caliber. That is one of those uh, discussions, I was going to say arguments, it's a discussion that oftentimes turns into an argument. It's one of those discussions that opinions are going to vary wildly. I personally choose 9mm. Why? Well, it's more than powerful enough to get the job done, but it can do so with a cartridge that is, you know, comfortable in a single stack magazine like this or a double stack magazine. And you can get a double stack magazine without making the grip too wide, unlike 45 ACP and most of the, uh, the guns that chamber it if you try to double stack them. Nine millimeter offers all the power you'll need. It offers plenty of different bullet designs so you can choose whatever hollow point or in this case, a Lehigh defense bullet in an underwood load. Uh, this is the Extreme Defender, which is the caliber and cartridge I prefer to carry. And I have a whole video series out there uh, with ballistics tests of this particular load and why I choose to carry it. But nine millimeter works for me. Nine millimeter gives me ample ammunition when I want to carry a gun that has 15 rounds in it. It also lets me go single stack if I want to go super discreet and skinny, but it still offers all the power that's necessary for self-defense. Don't let anybody tell you that nine millimeter is underpowered. Heck, I've been known to carry handguns chambered in calibers as small as 32 ACP. My little Beretta Tomcat Sometimes when I'm walking the dog, I'll just stick that in my pocket when I go outside because it's all I feel I need at the moment. So don't let people tell you that, you know, nine millimeter is better than 40 or 40 is better than nine millimeter or 45 ACP is better than them all or vice versa and any combination thereof. It's simply not true. Choose what you like. And if that's 40 Smith and Wesson, awesome. If it's 357 SIG, awesome. You make that decision ultimately because you have to have confidence in the gun that you're carrying the caliber that you've chosen, and the load that you're carrying as well. Many times in videos like this, the topic of a good holster is forgotten to be discussed. A holster should do a couple of things. First of all, it should make the gun safe to carry. And to make it safe to carry, I mean, at least in the case of this particular handgun, it covers the trigger guard and trigger. That means this gun is safe to carry because the trigger can't be physically pulled. Now that doesn't mean you can't inadvertently pull the trigger when reholstering the gun, and that's something that you have to be careful about. But once the gun is in the holster, the trigger and all fire controls are covered. So that makes it safe. Now the other important thing is how comfortable is the holster? I find these a and design Kydex holsters to be very comfortable. I carry appendix, but just like me trying to pick a handgun for you, I can't tell you what holster is gonna fit or work well for you. 
Unfortunately, I have drawers full of old holsters that just didn't work for me, and there's no magic sauce. You just have to figure, out, figure it out on your own through trial and error. But again, a and Designs worked well for me. Now, another thing that's important is the belt. You'll want a very firm belt that is able to handle the weight of a gun in a holster. I use Core Essential belts. This is a Core Essentials belt, and I like the a and Design holsters because they work well with the Core Essentials. This is a 1.5 inch wide belt, and I like the single clip design. When I'm sitting inside of a vehicle, I can reach down, hit that clip, and pull the gun out, stick it in the center console of my Jeep, and then put it right back in my pants without having to do what I call the super tuck dance, which is you fighting with your belt and your pants and your holster trying to get your gun back in there because the holster just has too many uh, connection points and weird connection devices. I just like a very big simple clip like this because it works well for me. This little claw is designed to push the gun back against your belly so that it, it can be easily concealed by a light cover garment like a t-shirt. The jury is still out on these little TLR6 lights. This one's a laser light combo, but I only have a light enabled. Uh, that's because I don't personally use lasers for defensive carry. The Glock 43X, the one that's on that particular gun, is just a light and it's a little bit more affordable, but they work on the P365s, the Glock 43, 43X, little handguns like that. So I'll probably do a video on these lights maybe in the future. I don't do a whole lot of light videos, but if it's something I'm carrying, I might actually do a video on it. Uh, as with regards to the P365 XL, I discovered today that I have some rust on there I need to take care of. Uh, that's kind of a bummer. I expect finishes to hold up better than that. None of my other carry guns have seen a lot more use have started to rust like that. But uh, yeah, the only other thing I would change on the P365 XL is this bug that needs to die, is uh, the rear sight. Now it does have good sights on it from the factory. They're okay, they're workable, they're night sights, but this plate comes off and you can put a red dot sight on there. We're waiting for the SIG, I think it's the uh, Romeo Zero or something like that. It's gonna be made specifically for this little handgun or maybe some adapter plates down the road for other RMRs. I may run that on here, or hopefully somebody else comes out with better sight options than what's on here. But these are usable. They're not bad, at least they're night sights, and uh, they're not horrible. It just sucks about that rust. All right, guys, hopefully what you can take away from this video is that nobody can pick your handgun or caliber for you. That's something you're gonna have to do yourself, and that's gonna require some research. Go out with your friends that shoot, shoot their firearms. Go to a local range that rents firearms and rent and shoot as many as you can, but at least at a minimum, go to several different gun stores and take a look at the popular brands that are out there. Try to stick to name brands if you can, but if you're on a strict budget, you can start looking at some of the more budget-oriented firearms that are out there. Guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best way to do that is to become a Patreon supporter. There is a link down below. Please consider becoming part of our Patreon family. And also swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Thanks for 11 years of support, and we'll talk to you guys soon.